Hello there and welcome back to AD Craft. Today we're going to be expanding on our fantastic steampunk town with a bridge over the canal to a new area. But first, because mainly I'm a crazy person, I'm in front of our massive warehouse that goes over three stories that we built last episode. And as you can see here, I've set myself up a beacon. The reason for this is that I, as I said, aforementioned crazy person, decided that I don't have enough storage in this, even though it's got, I think it's a hundred plus sorters that go over these three levels. Now, the other thing that I realized is that these brilliant conveyor belts that go into the ground don't actually go anywhere at the moment. And I'm not particularly happy with that. I would like to tie this all together. So the real way that I can do this is to dig down to add some more storage underneath and that will also have the benefit of meaning that we can tie into this outlet pipe and actually just bring the full story of this warehouse together and make sure that all of the bits tie together and give me some more bulk storage particularly for the things that I'll need like cobble and smooth stone where I'm going to need loads and loads and all of the terracotta from chipping away at this mesa so now I am going to get building and specifically I'm going to dig down and start mining away underneath two and a half pickaxes worth of mining later and loads of resources and I've got myself a massive hole directly beneath our warehouse as you can see here it connects up to the sewage tunnel that goes through that way so this will come in and be also integrated into the build and the two conveyor belts that go upstairs as well those are going to come out and also connect to some stuff and this gives us loads and loads more space to have first of all just some normal uh, storage areas so we've got the two layers of the normal sorting system and over here is where I'm going to have the mass storage so going to be automatic sorting again but six double chests high for things like the stone which should should solve the problem that I've got so combined with upstairs that is going to be a huge amount of storage and should give us everything that we need for now so the next thing on the agenda is to take this material upstairs combine it with the things that I've already got and start crafting the stuff to actually build this because there's a lot of blocks that are going to go into this even just the floor and the ceiling and the walls just so many blocks so there's going to be a lot of crafting and a lot of building but if we go like this and we are complete with the build and I honestly wish it only took that long because this has taken me an absolute age to finish so we've got loads and loads more storage coming in on the top and then we've got here the real big storage bins for the stuff where I get loads of it like the cobblestone and the smooth stone and we've tied in now which I'm much more happy with all of the different elements so we've got the two conveyor belts one coming through down here connecting to this huge one that runs the length of the build the other one connecting into this machine down here and this machine as well connects us through if we go through here so this machine there's the other conveyor belt as you can see so we can just drop straight in from the outside brings us to the waste outlet so we can actually head through here and just come straight into this level as well so if we head back in through this way we can just run through this pipe and it brings us back out into the bottom level of our storage system and we've got various different other details like some of the slime some of the honey block crates here and this which is based on an average tuna sandwich video um, inspired by that I've obviously put my own spin on it using the copper blocks and the lightning rods uh, to build this really really funky steampunk looking machine and this kind of this tank air tank or fuel tank or something and what we have here so many people in the comments were saying that I should be using all of those eggs that I managed to acquire for decoration so here we have some eggs powering some of the machinery itself so really really happy with how this has gone love how it ties all of the various different bits together to make it a bit more functional and love some of the little decorative touches but most of all I love how much storage this is going to give me although I do now have to put all of the filters in this new section and start trying to work out what on earth is going to go where so wish me luck 2000 years later everything is now in place so i've sorted all of the high volume items into here and brought over things from the farm as well 
all of this terracotta that I've dug out, the, the particularly high volume ones there. And of course, I've been running the cobblestone generator to get loads and loads of cobble to fill up these chests and the smooth stone as well. So got good supplies of pretty much everything that I'll need for all of the new projects. Everything is now in here and I've kind of fixed and sorted out the filters. So I've put the things that I've got the most of in the big chests here and then put things that I've got fewer stuff on the barrels further up. I've also added myself beds on each of the levels and done all of the manual sorting to bring the things that I just really don't have room to put into the automatic sorting system. Alongside that, I have put a bubble column as well that goes all the way from the bottom to the very top. And when this comes out here, right at the top, it also has a nice drop right the way down. So I can get between the levels pretty quickly. So the next thing that I am going to do is another farm. I need some more resources. Most specifically, I need some bones and I need some coal. And alongside those, you get wither skulls as well. So that is going to be the next project, which will involve finding a different nether fortress because this one's just not going to do. It would take so, so much spawn proofing to actually get this one into some kind of a scale that I can use. And the one down there again just particularly wasn't very good. So I'm going to be exploring for a bit and looking for a suitable nether fortress, preferably one that's in a soul sand valley or a warped forest. So directly after this clip, I went to get myself a drink and I learned very, very quickly why you do not go AFK in the nether. So looking around the local warped forests, I found that this little gem, and it appears to be with, aside from that little bit sticking out here, that the entirety of this fortress is embedded in this rock. And that is brilliant news because it means that this is just solid and there are no spawning spaces in it. So the spawn proofing is gonna be an absolute minimum. I keep coming around the corner and finding like loads and loads of blazes and various other mobs. So I'll do a bit more exploring to make sure this is suitable and then find a cross section where I wanna start building and get on with excavating some space. Well, that's a welcome surprise. I've now explored the entire fortress and lit up quite a lot of it. And I've also dug my way up from the fortress, which is down there at the bottom, up here to bedrock and got myself some more of the level 127 as we can look here on the right blocks of bedrock so i am going to be clambering up onto the roof and breaking this block right here so that we can connect this up for easy transportation from our main nether area Now that hole is blown in the ceiling and I've connected things up with some ladders. I have found myself the perfect spot in this nether fortress to center the farm on. So this gives us the minimum amount outside a warped forest that we're gonna have to spawn proof. However, that is gonna be the next task, taking all of these pressure plates that we've got here and potentially some more that I'm gonna have to head back to the base for and completely covering this place in these pressure plates to spawn proof the interior. This is gonna take quite some time. And after what seems like forever, I am finally done. And this bit here that sits just outside the fortress, which is just hidden away behind that warped forest, probably has taken as long as the entire of the fortress itself. Though on the plus side, it did mean whilst I was doing this, I was able to catch one of these guys in a boat. So I've got one of the guys with the sword. I'm going to need him to attract the wither skeletons there. So all I need to do is when I'm ready, come back here, break the boat, take off my helmet and get him to chase me quite a long way through this. But yeah, I have used so, so much iron. It is a really, really good job that I have been stockpiling this stuff pretty much since the start of the season. Um, because I definitely need to replenish my stocks after this, but a lot of these have been placed and I probably missed some gaps, How, like this one just up here, for example. Um, but yeah, this, this'll do, this'll do. There's so, so much going on here, like you can see 
down there oh this is hours and hours work definitely will be worth it though in the long run but now i am tired Whilst digging out the space for the farm, I have an unexpected surprise, my first ancient debris. So this, I'll have a look around, see if there's any more, probably isn't. Um, yeah, first piece, but that does remind me later on, I might go looking for some more ancient debris so that I can get all of my gear netherite and so that I won't drop it in lava and it'll burn up again, because that was really annoying. It took an absolute age to get the stuff back. And there we have our piglin captured in place. Now all I need to do is to block him in here with this trapdoor. And now he is in there forever. And the last thing to do now that I've grabbed my anvil is to name this guy so he doesn't despawn. And this guy is gonna be forever with a bait. So you are now stuck there, Mr. Witherbait, and you can't go anywhere. That won't let you out. And now I've just got to clean up this area. I have put my helmet back on. So yeah, clean up this area and finish by putting the carpets out here to create the spawning locations. So now we have finished the farm. And as you can see by these wither skeletons, this is pumping them through into the underground. So that one should get knocked down any second. And then we've got some more. I am blocking the spawns from this side so it's not working at full efficiency but if we head down here then we'll see what I've done with the area at the bottom of the farm where we can collect things. I have done a little bit of decoration down here, found a natural vein of the magma blocks so I've just built those in here and used plenty of light and these are slabs and what we find is that goes a bit random uh, but the rest of them will come down here and then they will be ready for a swipe of the sword with all of the output going into these chests down here and I've been doing some AFKing for about probably a couple of hours maybe a little bit longer and the results are down here so get rid of that flash get rid of those swords what we've got here is more than a stack of wither skulls and loads and loads of bones and coal so this is absolutely perfect for what i need there's probably some stuff in the side ones as well another wither skull there and yeah some more stuff down this side so really happy with how this has worked out i am going to clean out this and take it back to our main base then probably come back and do a little bit of afk and then I need to think about getting some more beacons from some of these skulls. I thought it would be worth showing you the scale in the end of some of the spawn proofing that I had to do, which was so, so many pressure plates. I worked out that I hadn't gone far enough, so I've had to go back several times and work out where there were gaps. But I'm so glad that it's done and that it's working. But that was a grind. Now that I'm back, I have a lot of landscaping to do in order to clear some space for the next builds into the steampunk area. Now, I am absolutely sick of my diamond pickaxe constantly running out and also the shovel as well. So there's a couple of things I need to do. Firstly, I need to take this box and go and blast some holes in the nether to find myself using some of these fire resist potions as well. Some more of the ancient debris so I can get myself some netherite tools and netherite armor. Once I've done that I can take some of my skulls and I can go to the end and cheese some withers to make sure I've got plenty of beacons. But first of all the nether. Just around the corner from the portal I have found a nice space and dug down to 14 which I've always found is the best place for blasting because it's mostly uh, just beneath all of the lava lakes so you don't get quite as much lava as you would otherwise. So now I need to make a little space so that I can actually have a staging area and dig out a whole bunch of tunnels that I'm then going to blow up. After all of that, my nether now looks like Swiss cheese. There are blast holes absolutely everywhere going in all directions. Just any places where I found a nice long section that didn't have much lava in it. So this one, for example, I cleared out a lot of the lava. And yeah, have just gone through and used up all that TNT, plus a bunch more that I went and crafted. But on the plus side, I have come out with 
49 ancient debris so this should be perfect for what we need which is going to be mainly making our tools into netherite because it's put a significant dent in the durability of my pickaxe just by doing some netherite mining so i'm going to take all of these the materials i just dumped off here back to the base and get my kit upgraded In the end here, under the end portal, I have marked out 0, 0, which is the one directly under the middle. And then by backing away here and placing our T of soul sand and some of our wither skulls, we can generate a wither. And once he's charged up, I can take this here, smite five sword. And this will make very, very swift work of him as he will get trapped in this portal and we can cheese him to our heart's content, even though he's a bit loud and get ourselves another nether star and then in no time another star and a wither skull and now just to do that several more times well all of those beacons have now been put to good use so as you can see from the top of my screen i've got a whole bunch of new effects i've also activated the beacon that i had underneath there and put one over there embedded in the in the actual walkway itself so that these can be switched on and off at will and those are just going to give me speed so when i move around this area i'm going to go a bit faster and i've put a quad beacon over there as well to help me with the next step which is going to be clearing all of this so wish me luck the next area is now cleared and ready to be paved and also ready to be connected up to the other area across the canal as I'm going to have a bridge just over my shoulder there. There's going to be a lot of resources that are going to go into this. First of all in paving it and building the road and then building these workshops. But luckily it's just a very very short jaunt for me to go to my storage system and pick up whatever I need. So I'm going to do a little bit of resource gathering now and then I'm going to start building. The first stage of this upgrade is now complete and as you can see flexing a little bit with the wither skulls on top of this bridge but they make an absolutely fast fantastic uh, little addition in terms of decoration if we head down here we've opened up this section so we can see across and at the moment i've got some doors that don't go anywhere but in the future if you've got any ideas on what you think these should lead to underneath then let me know we've got this little slipway as well that's gonna allow us out of the canal if we go in there through to the new area and these are now completely ready for the builds and that is going to be the next thing right after i go to sleep All of the decoration on this area and the interiors are now complete so I can show you what's going on whilst all of the items that were left over are sorted through my sorting system. I love having that round here. But the first thing to note is we've got these big boilers a couple around the side so that it looks good when we're coming through the base and these have got some soul fires burning inside them on some soul soil. I really like how that gives some nice uh, effects going out of the top. And these also have some highly functional cogs that are connected up to this, the main machine here, which is an automated sugarcane farm. It's not the biggest, but it will give some passive sugarcane as it does push those off when they grow to a certain size. And if I need some extra raw stuff getting caught up, I have got a hopper mine cart that can go around and pick things up. And this is, of course, two layers as well. The other passive farm that I have going on here is this teeny tiny, but quite effective, little cactus farm so when the cactus grows it can't grow against the block so it pops off and hopefully doesn't get killed on the cactus itself but drops in here and we also then have this machine which i really like oh fall in the hole uh, with again some more of the soul fire and some anvils going along here that looks a bit like a conveyor belt going into this machine so the first wor workshop really like how this one's turned out and then a very different look with these very industrial massive pipes going into the second one but this also has a function so if we come in here 
we have got a melon and pumpkin farm and this one here is an ill mango design which i will put in the description alongside the logical geek boy with a skeleton farm and this has been doing some significant work just popping off all of the melons and pumpkins as they grow i've put loads of barrels in here because i'm pretty sure that these are eventually throughout the course of the different episodes going to be filled up with melons and pumpkins because this hasn't been going for that long but it has pumped out quite a lot of these which will be very useful once we get the villagers set up over here so aside from that coming down the side we have another one of these vans this one this time is holding some of the wool from the wool farm and taking that away to be sold somewhere else in the steampunk town We've got various different stacks of things because again we are still technically on the dock side i've gone to another layer here because i want to start stepping things back and adding a bit of height vertically into these bills because we've got this big hill i've got some ideas of what i'm going to do here but equally if you've got any ideas and things that you'd like to see in this town let me know in the comments and here finally we've got this machine again with a big boiler and going into this and with some cables going into the ground i love this effect with the smoker just the top of that and the way that the chains look like they're disappearing into the hole but yeah really really pleased with how this looks i think that this steampunk area is really coming together now and i'm super pleased with how this is going so i hope you've enjoyed the video if you have let me know leave a comment leave a like and make sure that you subscribe and i'll see you next time on adcraft